guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are. I'm so, so, so grateful that you guys are listening and watching and just interacting with my videos. I'm, I'm so gratified and I'm so grateful that you're subscribing and being part of my community. In today's video, I want to speak to you guys about something that is a little painful because so many INFJs, so many of you guys have messaged me saying exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing. You've messaged me saying that for the longest time, you thought that you were broken somehow. You were misplaced. You were not part of this world, that you should not be here. For the longest time, INFJs grow up thinking that they are somehow not normal, somehow broken. That broken word is really, really common among a lot of the INFJs I speak to. I'm broken. I was born broken. And... Interestingly enough, a lot of the videos that I do, they watch them and they realize, okay, they're not broken. <laughs> they're just the way, it's just the way they are. They're normal and there's lots of people like them and it's all right to be the way they are. That's the reason I wanted to do this video, perhaps, is because I wanted to get, up, get at all of those people who are, who think that they're broken. And perhaps they don't realize that the brokenness of them is actually the brilliance of them. There is this practice in Japanese culture, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a practice of putting gold into the cracks of a broken waist. So when a waist bro breaks in Japan, instead of fixing it just like that, just by glue, they'll put gold in those cracks, in those areas where the waist was broken. So when you, whenever you see that waist, you see the gold, you see that it makes it more beautiful. Those cracks are what gives it its character. Without it, it would just be an ordinary waste. But with those golden cracks that are illuminating its imperfections, it becomes more perfect. It becomes more beautiful. It becomes more epic, more awesome, more whatever you want to call it, right? That practice is so beautiful to me because I look at it and I think to myself, that's exactly what an INFJ is all about. Well, all, almost everyone on this planet is like this, but specifically with regards to us, we always consider ourselves to be broken. We have so many cracks and imperfections in us. Everything about us is imperfect in so many different ways. And because we look at ourselves really critically and really harshly, we think our, we are like the worst people on this planet. We wonder to ourselves why we're even still alive. Like, what is the point of us? We are so broken. We're so miserable. We're so horrible. We're so mean. We're so whatever. There's a billion acronyms adjectives adjectives to describe us they are not nice right so we think of ourselves as horrible human beings and i think to myself i've done this video where i think to myself why do you even want to hang out with me why do you like me i am broken i am weird i am imperfect right so we think that to ourselves and so we look at ourselves always in that broken manner but if you think to yourself in that the way of the ways that is fixed with gold on the cracks or if you think about it that way, our imperfections are what give us character. And that's what I want you guys to really realize. Every time you think of yourself as imperfect, think about how that imperfection makes you unique in a way. I'll just give you a small example. For the longest time, I was very spontaneous. From birth, I'm, I've been very spontaneous. When I was three years old, I opened the, the door of the house and I walked off into the neighborhood, talking to strangers, having fun. Came back five, five hours later, my parents are frantic looking for me. And I'm looking at them like, what is wrong with you? I just went out for a walk. I just went to talk to some neighbors. I'm back now. Calm down. I was three at the time. And that has been a part of me for eternity. It's going to be a part of me forever. I am a spontaneous human being. For the longest time, though, as it is, my parents looked at my spontaneity and they were afraid for me because they saw the spontaneity as a negative thing. If you're spontaneous, then you can't stick, be consistent with things. Oh, that's what they thought. If you're spontaneous, then you're always going off into doing all these random things that might be dangerous, might, might hurt you in a way, right? Spontaneously getting up in the middle of the night and going for a walk with a stranger that you met online. I do that all the time. Spontaneously getting up and going to a party with a person that I just met this morning and I decided, I think I trust you, let's go out dancing. Or spontaneously getting into a relationship with a person that I met on an island when I was traveling. Random things like that. It's spontaneity. And for the longest time, I believed that spontaneity was a bad thing that I was. It was an imperfection of mine. 
I hated that part of myself that was spontaneous. She wanted to do all these cool things, all this fun stuff. But I was afraid that if I did that, I would not be successful. I was not being good. I wasn't going to be the person I wanted to be. Thankfully, thankfully, I have discovered over time that my spontaneous nature is the reason why I am so unique, that why my life is so awesome, why I live the kind of life that most people dream about living. That's the reason, the spontaneous nature of mine is the reason I'm able to go out and explore all these unknowns without any fear because I'm like, well, I'm just trying it out. I'm just experimenting. It's my spontaneous nature that allows me to do these videos and just talk about stuff that I am not an expert in because I'm like, well, it's just me being spontaneous. Now I love my spontaneous nature. In the past, I hated it. It was a part of my broken self. I wanted it to go away. I wanted it to disappear. I, I wanted to stamp it out. Now I realize it is what makes me unique. It is that gold in the crack that I've always been searching for. So I am not broken. And my spontaneous nature, she is not broken either. She is awesome. And she helps me do all these things that I would not do. I would be boring. I'd be sitting at home, chilling with Netflix, not doing anything with anyone if I didn't have her to push me, to make me do all these things that I wouldn't do otherwise, right? She's brilliant. And I need to love her. Right? I need to love all of my imperfect selves. And I want you guys as INFJ as well, if you guys are listening and you think, oh, I am broken, you are not broken. Right? You are not broken. There are parts of you that are imperfect. But guys, those imperfect parts, those imperfect parts, those are the ones that make us unique. Right? It's the funniest, stupidest thing on this planet why I wish parents would stop, stop saying those things to us. It's not they're not doing it because they hate us or you know, they're against us. It's what has been taught in humanity over and over again. Cut out all those parts of you that are unique because they're imperfect. Do what everyone else is doing. Follow the crowd, blah, 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 blah. It's nonsense, right? Those parts of you that you hate, those parts of you that are introverted, that want to spend time at home, that are creative, that are imaginative, that want to daydream, that can see into someone else's soul, all those parts to yourself, they're very unique as an INFJ. So many of you messaged me saying that, you know, you hate those parts of yourself because you're broken. I want you guys to realize over and over again, over and over and over again, tell yourself this over and over again. Whenever you say that to yourself, you're not broken. You're not broken. I'm not broken. I am not broken. And try to realize in that moment how that part of yourself is actually helping you be that human, awesome human being that you are. I did a video recently about how we have obsessive personalities. I will literally listen to um, a piece of music a billion times over, a thousand times over, right? Until I get sick of it and then I'll stop and then a few months later I'll start again, right? Same thing with my Star Trek obsession right now. I'm listening, I'm watching Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm obsessed with it. That's all I do. That's all I want to do. I take notes on it. I'm watching it. I'm learning from John luc Picard and from the time travel stuff they talk about by humanity. It's so interesting to me. I'm obsessed. These videos, as soon as I started doing them, I got obsessed with them. I do so many of them. I do one, a sing one every single day because it's so interesting to me. So this is the obsession personality that I have, right? But in the video, I asked you guys to remind yourself that the, our obsessive personalities are the reason why we are so interesting. What happens to us is that we kind of find a random topic, time travel in my case, that I find fascinating. And because we're obsessive, we'll learn everything about it and we'll get deeply immersed into it. And that's the reason INFJ is when we know something, we know it very deeply. This is the reason I love this INFJ stuff because I'm so deeply involved in it. I'm obsessed with the idea of it. What do I do? Why do I do it? Why do I do it this way and not that way? Obsessive. But that obsessiveness is actually a good trait. It's actually a positive trait that we have. We could look at it in a negative way, obviously. I mean, we get obsessed and once we get obsessed, we become a stalker or you know things like that. But it could be looked at in a negative way or a positive way. I want you guys to look at it in a positive way. Learn from it. Learn how you can use all of these broken parts of yourself in order to realize that you're not really actually broken. It will take a long time. It took me a long time to get to this point where I look at myself and I don't think, God, you're hateful. When I was younger, I used to think that. I used to think to myself, God, I am such an idiot. Why am I even still alive kind of thing? I would think that all the time. I'm not even lying about it. I never committed suicide because that was not... I thought I was too brave for that, I'm too courageous, I, I can't take the easy way out. 
was like, well, if it's going to be a hard life, I'm going to stick to it. Kind of thing, right? I never thought about really suicide, but I did think a lot of times I wondered to myself, why am I still alive? Like, what is the point of my life, right? Why such an hum imperfect human being should be allowed to live, right? The more I look at all of my traits and little by little I'm learning more and more about me, I realize that all of these traits are actually really amazing and they help me in so many different ways. My spontaneous nature, my obsessive personality, my intuit intuition that's so freaking strong sometimes that I know things before they even say it, you know. Um, what else? The, the fact that I am allergic to fake people or insincerity, that's actually a good thing, it's not a bad thing, right? The fact that I can make friends really easily, but true friends very rarely, right? All of these things, there's so many parts to us that sometimes we look at and we think, God, why am I like that, right? Why am I so imperfect? We are imperfect, right? That's all right. I'm not saying that we, we are perfect in any way, but I want you to look at the gold in the cracks rather than just the cracks. What is the gold in it? What is the gold in that obsessiveness? What is the gold in that spontaneity? What is the gold in your intuition? What is the gold in the door slam? What is the gold in all the hard boundaries that we have? There's a gold in every part of ourselves, the good and the bad, whatever you want to label it as, right? The imperfect and the perfect. There's gold in it. Look at the gold, figure out what the gold is. That'll make you love yourself more because self-love is a humongous problem with energies. We hate ourselves mostly, right? Because we see ourselves truly as we are. We don't give ourselves any slack. We don't cut ourselves any slack. We're harsh on ourselves. We criticize ourselves. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the, the, the good of it, right? Where is the gold? You are imperfect, but where is the gold in that imperfectness? Does that make sense? I hope it does. This video is already very long, so I hope that you, you know, watched part of it at least. If you liked it, comment below and let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know what your gold is in your personality that perhaps you're still mining. I hope that you guys have an amazing day wherever you are, and I hope that you'll watch my other INFJ videos as well. There's loads of them. There's a playlist that you can follow. And if you guys are interested, you can join my team at patreon.com slash Thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys next time around. Bye for now.